Welcome to the Jazz Piano School podcast, episode number 247. My name is Brendan Lowe, creator and founder of Jazz Piano School. In this particular podcast episode, one of our amazing educators by the name of Sterling Koza is going to be doing something a little bit different. He's going to be giving you a blues a day practice challenge. Now, you literally have no choice but but to get better, if you're following along and doing the things that Sterling Koza is teaching you in this particular episode. So if you enjoy the blues and you want to get better at the blues, this episode is definitely for you. Now, go to jazzpianoschool.com to check out all of our free education that we have to offer, a podcast, lick of the week, transcriptions, and so much more. And if you're looking to take a next step with us, we do have a membership available, which you can get access to all of our courses, over a thousand plus hours of education, and so much more. With that being said, let's dive right into this episode. Here we go. Hey, everybody. This is Sterling Koza here for jazzpianoschool.com. It's been a while since I've done a podcast. Uh, this is my this will be my first podcast in the new year, so it feels good to be back uh, sharing some tips with you all on jazz piano. Now, in the spirit of the new year, I um, like to always start fresh, and when I think about my practice routine, I'm always thinking about ways that I can improve it and, uh, you know, incorporate some new things, but also some fundamentals. And to me, the fundamentals, you know, lay the foundation for everything that I do on the keyboard. And I like to have things that I just practice every day. So today, the tip I have for you is practicing a blues a day. Now, why do we pick the blues? Well, the blues is essentially in all the music that we've played, and you may have heard me talk about this before in previous podcasts, but I like to play a blues every day because not only is it going to be different every day, maybe we heard something differently or we want to play a different melody or a different key, um, but also uh, the way that we're going to play it is going to be different, and I always encourage students to record themselves playing, which can be a little nerve-wracking at first, but uh, the more you do it, uh, the, the easier it gets, and I think it really can give you some good results. So my challenge for you is to play a blues every day the moment you start your practice routine. And so I'm going to show you some ways that you can uh, develop this as a part of your routine and execute some skills to really get your uh, fundamentals down in as many keys as possible. So I'm going to start by picking a blues in the key of B flat, a very common key, and I'm using the tune Sunny Moon for Two. So here's how I'll play Sunny Moon for Two today. Let's give it a try. So there are a particular set of voicings that I use on this tune, Sunny Moon for Two. And the ones that I want to show you first are root third seventh. And these are key to any time you're playing the blues, root third seventh are going to be your best friend. Um, so what we want to do is get familiar with these voicings in a couple of different keys first before we start to improvise. So this might be review for some people. Uh, and if it is, you can challenge yourself by playing these voicings in some more distant keys. Uh, first, we're going to start with B flat. So you can see I've got root third seventh. That's B flat, D, and A flat. If we go to our four chord, we've got E flat, G, and D flat. And then back to our one chord. For the second four bars, I like to include the four diminished chord which would be E diminished seven. That's E natural, G, and D flat. Then back to one. For our last four bars, we've got the two, five, one, starting with C minor seven. That's C, E flat, B flat. And you got a couple options here. You can go up to F seven in root position, F, A, and E flat, or uh, you could go to just F and A, or if you want to go for a big stretch, which you may have seen me do before, 
you can go down to root seventh third. So you've again we've got three options for the two five one. Option A. Option B. And option C. So you can decide which one for you uh, fits your hand the best. Everybody has different hand sizes. And which one is your favorite sound? Uh, that's the beauty of jazz piano. It doesn't have to be the same thing for everyone. It can be different depending on your own personal tastes. For me, I'm gonna use option C because I really like this low bassy sound of the F, E flat, and A, something like Oscar Peterson would play. So I like that sound. So I'm going to use that voicing. Now let's try to transpose these voicings into the key of E flat. I'll use the same melody, Sunny Moon, for two. You might notice at the end there, I added a couple of extra chord changes, and this is where the blues a day principle really comes into full effect. If you're playing a blues every day the same way, it might get a little boring, right? Well, that could be a drawback, but also it encourages us to find new things. And you also might notice that I was playing different voicings in the key of E flat than I might have been in B flat. So. The beauty of trying the blues in other keys is it gets us out of our comfort zone and trying different things that we wouldn't otherwise play. So it can be challenging to learn new keys, but it can really pay off in the long run. Um, if we take a closer look at those last four bars, I added an extra chord. I added a six chord going into the two, five, one. So I went E flat seven, C seven, that's root third seventh, and then I think I played a, a two dominant, that same voicing from the key of B flat. So F7, B flat seven, and back to E flat. So that would be one, six, two, five, one in the key of E flat. Let's hear that with the melody. Yeah, so I think those dominant chords sound really good with the melody. Instead of just playing a minor two, I played a dominant two. So that's something you can always do in your accompaniment. You can change the qualities of the chords uh, to achieve a little bit of a different sound. So up until now, we've played Sunny Moon for two in the keys of B flat and E flat. Now, if I went to another day, uh, maybe I want to play uh, a different melody in a different key. Let's try a little improvisation this time. I'm going to play the key of F and use the tune Billy's Bounce. So let's work on a little improvisation and see what happens. Here's the melody.
All right, so there you have a little Billy's bounce in the key of F. Uh, I was going for a little more of a bebop sound at first because I was playing Billy's bounce. I believe that's a Charlie Parker tune. But towards the end, I started to hear a little more blues, and I decided to play the melody for Sunny Moon for Two. Just because you play one blues melody from the beginning uh, doesn't mean that you have to play it again at the end. So that's something you can do to change things up. But uh, I've practiced this tune a lot in the key of F, but what if I wanted to play it in a different key? I think I'll try it in the key of C. Let's see what happens. again. All right, so it can be challenging to play these melodies in other keys, but that's something that's good to work on. Um, because it not only develops your ear, but you never know. Somebody might call Billy's Bounce in C, and then you can be ready. You can say, hey, guess what? I already know that. <laughs> so um, I hope this has given you some good tips on some ways that you can develop your blues playing in all keys. Uh, today I cover a couple of keys, but you know you want to make it to all 12, especially if you're you know familiar with these tunes in, in those more, um, more keys with less flats and sharps, you know, like we did C, F, B flat, E flat. Um, you can challenge yourself by going around the circle of fifths and going to A flat, D flat, G flat, the key of B. Blues and B can be very challenging. So I hope that will get you going and keep you busy as we head into the new year. Happy practicing. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. Don't forget to go to jazzpianoschool.com to check out all of our free, amazing education, all of the free podcast blogs. We do have a membership if you're looking to take a next step forward with us, get access to over a 1,000 different jazz piano videos, playbooks, mini courses, a main course curriculum, success path, and so much more. If you have any questions, feel free to email us at support at jazzpianoschool.com. I hope you have a wonderful day, and as always, happy practicing.